Winning. again to coffee with conrad from conradrocks.net um good morning everyone trying to gather my thoughts here a lot's going on a lot is going on i don't know if you remember but uh a few days ago i had complained or (laughs) complained i had mentioned that there was something going on in the spirit and it was like someone's up to no good and it was a big heavy deal. It wasn't. It wasn't a demon. If you, if <laughs> it's principality type problem. And I found out since that started happening, um, people have died. My pastor was rushed to the hospital. Heart problems. He's there now. He's going to get through it. Um, when I lived in Houston, thank you for your prayers. Someone I know was committed to an institution. They're out. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. So, uh, during prayer this morning, I is, it, um, I'm trying to organize my thoughts here how I'm going to go about this. God wanted me to go to the scripture, um, it's going to be Second Samuel 24, and hopefully this shines a light, and we can get some illumination for what's going on um, right now in the spirit spirit realm. As Christians, I, you know, I, I know I may lose a large part of my audience, but I, I've dealt with people, you know, if I offend you into heaven, amen. I'm here, my gospel's to the lukewarm. Um, you know, there's a lot of people sitting in the pews. There's a lot of people on that day that'll say, I prophesied in your name. I did all this stuff in your name. And Jesus said, I never knew you, you know, my sheep hear my voice. So we're going to have to get there. You know, if, if you think that hearing God is not for today, then why do you pray to him? You know, why do you tell people I'm going to pray about it? You know, Jesus says clearly my sheep know my voice in John chapter 10. So we're going to talk about these things. If you follow me, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to encourage each other to dig deeper in the scriptures and to go higher in the spirit. That's what we're going to do. And today, we're going to be talking about this recent phenomenon that's going on. It's much more, it's it's affecting us. This affects us. And I've seen things like this. Um, You probably need to go back through my series, Spiritual Warfare, on ConradRocks.net. I did a five-part podcast series because it's something that we need to talk about. And this this is stuff that if you're not aware, it will knock you down. It it will hurt you. (laughs) You know, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. You know, when you say I'm ignorant of something, it means you're ignoring the Word of God. You're ignorant. You're willfully ignorant. If we're filling our minds with television rather than the Word of God, who is our God? You know, so we need to we need to dig deeper in these scriptures, and we need to share our revelation in in our communities. That's why I love social media. It's not one hour a week, you know, where we sit in a pew and we end up on that day saying, "Lord, Lord, didn't I didn't I prophesy in your name?" No, man. When we have this social media, we can link arms in the Spirit. We can share revelations. We can pray for each other. We can lift each other up in prayer. And we can encourage each other to draw closer to God, to to go higher. It's not a click. Christianity is not a click. There are people being slaughtered in other countries. I, I can show you, I mean, there's articles, I, I find them every day. And the American Christian just goes, oh, that's terrible. We're not doing anything about it. 
you know, I encourage you, even if it's like, you know, do something about it. <laughs> what is it? What is it in James? You know, if you see someone is empty of food and they need a jacket, and you say, "Peace be with you, be warm and be filled," and you don't, and you've got food and you've got a jacket, it makes us a hypocrite. We need to examine our own fruit. Are we in the faith? Are we providing the fruit? If if we abide in the vine, if we abide in the vine, which is the tree trunk of Jesus Christ, and we're the branches, you know that scripture. And his word flows in and out of us. We start out as a little nub, but we grow. And as we grow in Christ, the fruit automatically produces. You don't have to sweat. It comes out because the spirit inside, the spirit of Christ that dwells within us, can't help but to come out and, and bear fruit. It can't help it. You've, you've got a desire. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the day's hours of your heart. Day of the Latin of sire, father. He will, you will desire to do the Lord's will. You will desire to have his will on earth, his, his will in heaven be done on earth. Sorry, there's mosquitoes. Man, I'm telling you, when these, <laughs> when these principalities work, you gotta, you've got to examine your thought life. Even, even bugs can be a problem like mosquitoes <laughs> like a while ago i was in prayer i'm doing my ephesians 6 warfare thing you know my lord's a shield about me and all that stuff and you know bugs i had to deal with bugs i got the spray yeah but you know spray don't work on the devil <laughs> you know i had a headache yesterday aspirin don't work on the devil <laughs> you know we need to pray so we're going to be talking a little bit about this when i was in prayer this morning god gave me um second Samuel 24. I think it's relative. Um, let me get to it. I'm going to read it in my uh, e-sword. For my video audience, there it is, 2 Samuel 24. For those of you that are listening on Block Talk Radio, if you're driving, I'm going to read it for you. But, you know, you can look it up too, 2 Second Samuel 24. I'm going to read the King James. I got the authorized open right now. Okay. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. Um, I'm looking at a verse here. Okay. And he moved David against him to say, Go number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord... Thy God, and to the people, how many soever they be, a hundredfold, that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. But why doth the Lord king delight in this thing? Okay. In other words, Joab was sensitive, and he knew from the earlier scriptures that, uh, you know, we don't need to... Sometimes There are times in numbers where God numbers the people. Um, but, but I believe in this scripture here that... God was allowing, you know, how Satan to tempt David to to number the people. And I'm trying to I there's a scripture that verifies this. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to the the reason I want to say this, it's in 1 Chronicles 21:1. And Satan stood up Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab, to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring them that I may know it. This is the parallel passage, and that's what I like about Esort. It has the treasury of Scripture knowledge. So you can jump around, you can find Scriptures really easy. And Joab answered. Now notice here, in this one, it says Satan stood up against Israel. That's why I said, um, you know, I believe God allowed Satan to do it, but I, I'm glad I could find the verse for you. Now notice, I want you to notice something here. 
Notice that a man of God, a man of God was used by the devil. So in these days right now, I want to tell you something. There are thoughts. You know, we have our own thoughts. There's the, the demons. You know, they can plan a thought. And um, then there's, you know, God, of course. But we've been reading, Susan and I, in our devotionals, and we've been hearing in church about the Prince of Peace. I've been talking a little bit about the Prince of Peace, and then we've been seeing it, hearing it in a church service. Also, it's coming up in the devotional. Now, one of the things that when we examine our thoughts in these coming days, during this time, uh, I believe the storm's almost over. I'm leading worship tonight, <laughs> so I'm leading worship tonight. It land past us aglow, and, uh, you know, sometimes when I do something like this, there's warfare that comes out, so I have to be in a mode of prayer, and, I mean, I'm just, this is, this, I've seen this happen a lot. I've seen, I have seen people that were ignorant, will, you know, when you're ignorant, it means you you don't know the scriptures. You haven't found someone to disciple you in that area, and you get beat up in it. There was a mosquito on my head, wasn't there? <laughs> I have seen a church destroyed by it. I have seen people, people that were Christians that would pray over the offerings and stuff. I mean, just people that you would never think in a million years fall away. They fell away big time. Did stuff that was just nutty, man. They went from being strong Christians to doing something like right here. A man of God was provoked, was moved by Satan to do something. Now my head itches where that mosquito landed. Ugh. Anyway. So we need to be we need to be aware of these things. Notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against Joab. Verse 4, and the captain of the host and Joab, he went out and did it to number the people of Israel. They passed over Jordan and pitched in Erorer on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad and toward Jazer. You guys, please forgive me for my mispronunciations. Then they came to Gilead and to the land of... Blah, okay. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to try that? I can't. Okay. I'm just going to skip. And came to the stronghold of Tyre. I got that one down. And to all the cities of the Hivites and the Canaanites, they went out to the south of Judah, even into Beersheba. So when they'd gone through the land, basically they numbered them all. Joab, Joab gave them the sum of the number of the people. And there were, uh, he goes over the counting, there were 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword. So David wanted to know how big his army was. In other words, the, the crux behind this is he was leaning to what is my strength? What's the flesh that I've got? Okay. And David's heart smote him. Uh-oh. Smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done, and now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Now, there's a scripture... Um, I want to mention, that the psalmist says, oh man, I hope it comes up here, yeah, 2 Samuel 12, 24, um, I have been blameless before him and kept myself from my sin, that's the NIV, King James Bible, I have also been up right before him and kept myself from my iniquity. Now, notice here that um, we have iniquity. Sometimes, you know, the Lord was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. The, the wounds for our transgression, that's on the outside, you know, the sins with our hand. But he was also bruised for our iniquities. And iniquity starts out after repeated sin. It's something that it's something that we allow on the inside. Okay, for instance, this is why I'm always warning against watching secular television, uh, heck, even Christian television. To be honest, <laughs> watching TV, you know, uh, because it goes inside you. Okay, let's let's just talk about. Let me just kind of go over this for a second. Say smoking is cigarettes. Now I'm not picking on cigarette smokers at all. I'm just using. You could make it chocolate. Doesn't matter. 
one of the things that, that I've learned in sales is if somebody does something one time, the first time, they have an 80% chance of being convinced to do it a second time. So whenever you smoke that first cigarette, there's a high likelihood that you're going to smoke another one. Okay? Let's just call that sin. Let's just say that it's a sin. I'm not saying it is. Uh, let's just, it's, I'm just trying to prove a point. Right there, it's a sin. But the desire has not been planted yet. There's a point where after several times of sinning, you know, God allows you space to repent, then all of a sudden it becomes an iniquity, and that iniquity means it's on the inside. Now you desire it. Whosoever sins is a servant of sin. You will serve that cigarette. You will be in church praising God, thinking about how you can get out and smoke one. So David here, he admits he has an iniquity. And he keeps himself from it. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer these three things. <laughs> oh, man, this is getting good. Uh, choose one of them that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came. I'm going to check the chat comments in a minute here. I'm on a roll. <laughs> so Gad came to David and told him, said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come into thy land? I'm hearing this right now in the Spirit, Second Chronicles 5.10, I believe. Let me look it up and I'll come back to it. Second Corinthians 5.10, there you go. I'm all in the Old Testament mode. This is Paul talking to the Corinthians. This is Paul talking to the Corinthians. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is Paul talking to the Corinthians, Christians, saying we. We. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone that may receive things done in the body according to that what he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Somebody needed to hear that. Because it's kind of what David's going through right now. Now, <clears throat> go say unto David, here's these three things. Shall seven years of famine come into thy land, or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee, or that there be three days of pestilence in the land? Now advise thee. So, you know, God had such a relationship with David. You know, David was after his, his heart. And... Uh, he allowed, he said, pick your punishment, man. You know, he was standing before the judgment seat. This, is, this of course, is pre, pre-cross. This is Old Testament. But if you read, if you read David's stuff, he had, like, a New Testament relationship with, I mean, he's like, wow. You know, he knew God. So, anyway, he said unto Gad, I'm a great straight. Let me fall into the hand of the Lord, because he knows how wicked man is. For his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord, for those of you that think the Lord doesn't do things or allow things, the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel. Basically, he raised his finger and let sit Satan do what he wanted. It, you, you can only go so far with Job, but anyway... There you go. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check the chat room real quick, see what you guys are talking about. Mm. Oh, man, Garen, we're going to be talking about that. As a matter of fact, that's another thing. The other thing I was going to be talking about today, I got that in prayer. We're going to be talking about that, Garen. Um Man, yeah, you guys, we're, we got the spirit going on today. Hey, you guys, I want to tell you, uh, when it, the spirit of God works with believers, you notice how, like, God will tell me what a sermon is, or, or I'll be picking up in the spirit, uh, 
there's a difference actually, what the sermon is going to be about, <laughs> whatever. And then you'll notice that all of a sudden you're reading in your devotionals and you're reading your scripture and the pastor will be talking about that same same scripture, you know, that same revelation. That's why I'm saying right now God is saying peace. Peace. He's wanting peace right now. Amen, Gary. We're going to be talking about that. Hopefully I can get to it. Listen, I, Linda, can you put your link to your... Uh, blog on there because I want to promote your blog again. I don't want to dig back through my tweets. It's Letters for the Lord Prison Ministry, right? Let me see if I can find it. Letters for the Lord. Yeah, here it is. Everybody, um, I want you guys to check out Letters for the Lord Prison Ministry. It's con one of Conrad's comrades. And it's run by Linda. She's letters. Are you letters for the Lord on Twitter? Letters for the Lord. That's the number. I'm going to show you her thing too. Give her a follow. She wants you to go to prison, but she wants you to do it the right way, the way Jesus said. Hit her up. Give her a follow. And ask her about prison ministry. I'm sure she would love to talk to you about prison ministry. She has lots of testimonies. And as a matter of fact, she likes going to prison so much, man. I'm surprised she doesn't rob a bank so she can stay there. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Linda, for your support. Um, now I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to get back to this. And she's Letters for the Lord. Here it is in the chat room. And Prison Mentor on Twitter. All right. Where was I? I was talking about something very important. Okay. Now I want you to notice something. This is something that... This is a principality at work here. This isn't low-level demons. I mean, you know, the pestilences, demons work under principalities. And for you guys that, that don't, you know, you might be new or something, in spiritual warfare, Jesus has authorized us to cast out demons. And we have power over all the power of the enemy and all that. But there are also principalities. And one of the, one of the things, just quickly to refresh your memory, Remember when Jesus commanded the servants to go out and cast out demons and all that stuff, and they couldn't? Remember, they're like, why couldn't we cast them out? They didn't know. And, you know, the bigger the level, the bigger the devil. Jesus says, because of your unbelief, this one comes out by prayer and fasting. Okay? Like when Daniel did his 21-day fasts, the principality of Persia was withstanding the angel. Okay, there was a principality involved. It wasn't a low-level demon. But his prayer and fasting removed that prince of Persia, and then the prince of Grecia was set up, if you remember. And then also in Jesus, you know, Jesus prayed and fasted for 40 days. So he had definitely, fully God, fully man, he had cast out that demon. So what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, David says, I'm in a great strait. Let us now fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence, and when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel to destroy the people, It is enough. Stay now in thy hand. David here it's, it's enough, stay down thy hand. The angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna, the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned. Now this is something I want to drive home. I want you to get this. Because it's very important. I have sinned. And I... I have done wickedly. But these sheep what have they done? Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said to him, Go up here and altar to the Lord. So he had to sacrifice in the uh, threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gab, went up as the Lord had commanded. And Aruna looked and saw the king and his servants. They have this discourse here. And he said, you know, I want to uh, buy this. Um, I 
<clears throat> and the king said to Aruna, nay, you know, he was going to give it to him, but I will surely buy of it thee at a price, neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So two points I want to make here. Number one is I sinned. Now, there are some of us that have secret sins. And we sin secretly, and we think nobody sees us, <laughs> and we're getting away with it. And um, even though the Bible says we're surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, integrity and character is that thing that you do when you're by yourself. Can you practice that by yourself? David had a sin. He used his authority to commit that sin, like people are in government now. They're using their authority to commit sin. We see it happen all the time. But the point I want to make here is people died that were underneath David's covering. They were his people, his people. And he said, look, man, I am the one that sinned. I'm the one. Why are these people paying for it? Well, God obviously had made a promise to David that he's going to be king and he's going to rule and his throne's going to, you know, last forever. You know? When you have a call and you're commissioned, clean up. I just want to point out that when we sin, you know, we think that we're going to pay for it personally. Sometimes it, you know, David, David sinned in his house his house had war in it because he sinned. His children suffered. I will bring, you, you know, the iniquity of the fathers down to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So what happens when we sin, 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 get an iniquity, then our kids suffer for it. So, let's repent. Let's repent. I'm encouraging me. I mean, dude, I'm encur let's encourage each other. Let's, uh, you know, what's, what's funny, and I struggle with this. I struggle with this. I want God to remove the iniquities, and he has. He has. What's, what's really cool, and speaking of cigarettes, uh, Pastor Howard, the man that's in the hospital right now, a great man. Go, he is not just a hearer of the word. He's a doer. He disciples people. There's miracles in his ministry. People that were supposed to die live. Okay? The high, you know, he's walking in a higher anointing. He's, you know, he's sold out. And now he's in this hospital. So, you know, I definitely appreciate your prayers. Another thing I've been seeing recently, and this this has to do with Howard, too. I mean, I've been seeing a ball of light going into the darkness. And this has also been a common theme in the, the churches. It's what's going on in the spirit right now. This ball of light, you know, usually I think, you know, where light is, darkness must flee. But I've been seeing a ball of light going into the darkness where Howard is right now. There's darkness. <laughs> the demon-possessed patients might not just get up and leave. <laughs> We're called. We're not supposed to just reel them into the church building. Hello, let's reel the fish in. Come on, come on in. No, Jesus said, go. Go out there. Jesus went into the tax collectors and the sinners' houses. He was a ball of light in darkness. I know, you know, normally I think of light where there's light, darkness must flee. You know, but these people will see the light and they'll come to you. And I'm going to tell you, it's like moths. It's like moths. They're attracted to the light. And when that moth hits the light, the flesh dies. But what happens to the human spirit? That's what we're doing. We're killing our flesh when we come to the light. You know? Anyway, God's the father of lights. Now I wanted to go to this other thing. In Second Samuel 24, 24, 
And the king said to Arona, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. A couple of things. He was doing an offering on a threshing floor. I had no idea, but sometimes the stuff in our hand, the things that, we're, that we have in our possessions, are meant to be used in a different manner other than what our carnal mind thinks. You don't do offerings on a threshing floor. That's not what it's for. But God said. But God said. Sometimes he's going to ask us to do things that don't make sense. <laughs> used to used to that's how i knew it was god man i'm like oh you know that don't make any sense that's got to be god <laughs> anyway uh <laughs> but you know it's just whatever <clears throat> and then i found out you know the devil don't make sense either so that that was an incorrect way but notice here that david bought the threshing for he said i'm not going to offer burnt offerings unto the lord my God, of that which doth cost me nothing. So, following God, it costs. But guess what? You know, what are they? What's that saying? Salvation's free, but it costs a lot, or something. I can't. Someone know that saying? Yeah, lights in the darkness of prison. See, that's like Linda's going into prison. It's a ball of light. You go in there. There's these demon possessed prisoners, and guess what? Stuff is going to happen, man. You know, I bet there's principalities over prisons. I mean, you know, we do we do warfare in in um, the prisons too. I mean, you know, there's uh, in the heavenly places. That's where our warfare takes place. Now, I wanted to uh, um, talk about something Jaron mentioned about Judah. Um. Let me see if I exhausted my thoughts here, because I was praying about this first. All right. I'm going to go to Second Chronicles 20. You guys probably, for those of you that read your Bible, this is one of my favorite chapters to discuss. Um, Second Chronicles 20. There's lots of stuff in the news, man, but this is what I got in prayer today. And, you know, there's, there's stuff. We need, we need to glorify God today. I know I love talking about the news and, and stuff. Maybe we'll get to that. We're 30 minutes in right now. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1, I'm leading worship tonight. And uh, I thought about this. And I started, you know, I started praying about it. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit today. It came to pass after this, the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, with them other besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to do battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea and from the side of Syria. And behold, they are in, oh boy, there's a big word, Hazazatanamar, which is in Gedi. And, jo you know, the Lord should really come up with easier names. <clears throat> And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves to ask help of the Lord. Notice here that Judah gathered themselves to ask the help of the Lord. See, they know where their help comes from. When stuff's about to hit the fan, you know, I'm, when, when things are about to go bad, What do we do? Do we think of a carnal solution? How can I fix this problem? Do you think God allows? I'm going to tell you something. I've, I've been hearing this a lot recently. So that they will know that I'm the Lord. So that they will know that I'm the Lord. So that they will know that I'm the Lord. All these bad things happen so that they will know that I'm the Lord. I know I can open a can of worms with that. But if we don't have problems, there's grace in overcoming. How are we going to overcome problems? You know, we got to be an overcomer if we can handle, you know, the theme is we got God, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Time for a commercial, guys. I haven't played a commercial yet. I got to find it. Hi, it's Conrad from ConradRocks.net. I talk about pretty much anything from a Christian point of view. Please take the time to check out my advertisers at ConradRocks.net, and don't forget to subscribe via email. If you subscribe via email, 
Not only will you get my updated blog posts, videos, and podcasts delivered directly to your email, you will also receive my Inner Circle newsletter, stuff I don't normally put on my blog, real Inner Circle type stuff. You deserve it because you rock. Amen, and thanks again for the letters for the Lord Prison Ministry dot com. That's letters for the Lord Prison Ministry dot com. Here it is for my video viewers. Um, got some, got some more time. I can talk longer. I can play some more audio files. Anyway, back to our our Bible study here, and this is what I was getting in prayer today. Um, they asked the Lord for help. You know, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you a parallel that we can all understand. And this this comes from Seeking God, I mean, reading your scriptures and believing God, you know? When you're about to have a car wreck, what's your first reaction? What's your gut reaction? Is it to cry out to God? That's what mine is. (laughs) I mean, you know, I know where my help comes from. I know where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord. And... You know, what's funny is I, I'm in a mode of prayer all day. I'm sure my followers are too. But I'll do some silly things <laughs> like yesterday. I mean, I'm glad we can boldly approach the throne of grace because I do some silly things. Yesterday, I was running around the house. I was complaining to God about my, my cell phone. I'm like, I don't know where I put it. I don't know where I put it, you know. And I know he's God, you know, and he knows where I put it. So I'm sitting there, I'm running around, and in the midst of that, I'm thinking, you know, that surely is brazen to sit there and, you know, talk to God about that. And aren't there more important things, you know? But I wanted to know where my cell phone was. So anyway, I quietened down, I prayed, and sure enough, it was the last place I put it. That's I hate it when people say that, but it was. It was in my charging station, and I forgot that anyway silly but you know i i encourage you you know pour out your heart heart to god you know he knows you can't hide your sin from him he knows you can't hide your thoughts from him he knows you might as well be honest about it you know there's a lot of us that don't want to be honest with the lord in our prayer we i mean you know come on come on you think you're gonna fool god he knows he knows you might as well just pour it out um, but the thing is, you know, and the speaking for thing, and there's also a counter to that, you know, he shall, Mark eleven twenty three. he shall have those things that he saith. Well, don't speak negatively when you just, when you repent something in prayer, you know, when you do, when you do the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. You know what I'm saying? Don't sit there and start cance- canceling out your prayer of faith with words that you speak in your normal life. You're sowing, when you sow the word, you know, we're created in the image of God. God spoke, said, light be. Okay, and look at what happens with just a word, like be. When we say words, we're so into the spirit, man. Stop canceling out your prayer of faith with negative words. Stand on it, man. Walk on that water. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Stop looking at the wind. Now, they said Judah, which means praise, as Jaron had mentioned. Um... Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, they're beseeching the Lord here. Art not thou God in heaven? He knows who God is. And rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? Oh my gosh, God sets up principalities even over the heathen. And in thine house, hand, there is not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Art not thou our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword of judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence. Man. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of hearing that Second Chronicles 7.14 go through my mind. <laughs> if when evil come upon us in the, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence. For thy name is in thy house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou ha- will hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon 
in Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, see, he's interceding. He's interceding like Moses. He's reasoning, he's reasoning with God. Wouldst not let Israel invade. When they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not, behold, I say, how they reward us. People, people are wicked, man. You can't, you can't make a covenant. I mean, you can, but if you make a covenant with someone that doesn't have the Spirit of God in them, most likely they don't have integrity. I mean, there are probably atheists that have integrity, but when when someone doesn't have the Spirit of God, when they don't understand that there's eternal life involved, you know, my, I maintain my integrity before the Lord. When they don't understand that, when things, when pressure, you know, it blessed is the man who keeps his word to his own hurt. Oh, ladybug. Um, we realize that because we have eternal life. You know, we'll, you know why do people allow themselves to be fed to the lions. Why does it say in Hebrews that they did not accept deliverance so that they may obtain a better resurrection? In other words, these people are like, no, don't save me, man. This may be crazy to you. This may sound out there. That's the carnal mind thinks it's out there. But if you have a relationship with Christ, you'll say, wow, the martyr thing, um, I want you to pray about it. These people in Hebrews, they're saying they refuse deliverance so that they may obtain a better resurrection. When you go into a covenant with someone that doesn't have a, the Spirit of Christ in them, when stuff, when it starts hitting the fan and they don't know about eternal life, they don't have a relationship with Christ, they'll probably go the fleshly route. So, anyway, continuing on. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Let me back up a verse here, because this I think I, I think, I think I missed something here. I'm gonna go to Second Chronicles twenty twelve. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. You know how how uh, David numbered Israel. You know he wanted to know what his fleshly might was, but this guy Jehoshaphat he knew at this point that God is greater. He knew Gideon's war. He knew this. He read the scriptures. Neither know what we do, but our eyes are upon thee. We look, we look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Our eyes are upon you, Lord. What are you going to do? And all Judah, all of them, they were all congruently before this. Everybody was. Notice that they all agreed upon this. Notice that only the believers were present when Jesus raised the lady from the dead. He put out the unbelievers. He just had the Peter, James, and John inner circle. Okay? All of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jehiel, the son of Metaniah, and the Levite, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. This reminds me of Acts chapter 13. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, you know, then the Holy Spirit said. So that's what they're doing. They're following that prescription laid out in Scripture. We seek God, then he speaks. Draw near to God, like in James, and he will draw near to you. That's what they're doing. They're drawing near to God. They're standing on faith. They believe these things because they've seen a prescription. They've seen Gideon overcome with just 300 men or whatever against a, an outstanding number. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed. Fear not. <laughs> By reason. They're reasoning, you know. He understand, they understand. Reasonably, they're going to get killed. They're in trouble. Our reason, God supersedes our reasoning in sometimes. You know, the people in the Old Testament, they were reasoning that Jesus was going to, that there was going to be a Messiah, but they didn't fit, the, he didn't fit their reasoning. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Wow. For the battle is not yours, but God's. God's God exalts his word. He's going to perform it. 
Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight this battle. Dude. Do you realize? Judah means praise, as Jaron pointed out in the chat room. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. We're about to see something cool. We're about to see why worship is important. Judah means praise. Ye shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow... Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. I'm going to encourage you to step it up in your worship. Sometimes some of us, when we when we beginning with God. We may be afraid to raise holy hands into the Lord during worship. We may be f afraid or embarrassed to get in our knees and lift our hands and worship God and set a precedent for those around us. As leaders, we've got to be first. You've got to go through that ring of fire first and jump into the lap of the Lord so that others will follow. Some, some, you may be the only Bible some people read. You. Whosoever is embarrassed of Jesus and will not confess his name before men, Jesus will do the same thing about you before the Father. You know? We need to be sold out. My, my gospel is to the lukewarm. Let's go. Let's get with it. Let's seek God. Let's run the race. Let's cast off those weights that so easily beset us. Second Chronicles 20:19, and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. I'll tell you something, you know, a lot of us when we worship the Lord, we worship with a wimpy voice. You realize that the Spirit hovered across the waters, and the, the, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. In order to form a word. Your lips can move, but if there's no wind, whew, receive the Holy Spirit, that type of thing. The wind goes through the mouth, and your mouth forms words by, you know, putting the tongue to the tip of your teeth or pursing your lips. That's a word. It's a combination of both wind and, you know, staccato pitches. Guys, I had to come in here to the house to do some editing. I had There was too much noise outside, so I wanted to finish this here. Um, they had made a loud noise and the noise i mean the very fact have you ever noticed that the when the spirit makes intercession with groanings that cannot be understood i think that's in romans um somewhere romans eight twenty six. you notice that when our voices when we praise god if there's a guttural response i mean when you ever have the gut feeling it's like something rises up from the spirit from within you know, in God, you know, he spoke forth he, his only begotten son. Well, if Jesus is the word, just think of God coming out of his mouth. There's, it's, it's this thing we're made in his image. So when we, something comes from deep within, it comes up and air purses through our lips and forms words. And God inhabits that, man. God inhabits the praises of his people. Now, as they rose early in the morning, they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood still and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established. Believe as prophets, so shall you, shall you prosper. Um, I did an inner circle podcast about train wrecks in the prophetic. There's a lot of people that call themselves a prophet that tell you, to, you know, that you're, they'll do my prophets no harm, despise not prophecy. you got to have discernment. Right here, Jehoshaphat's talking about the real prophets, the real ones. You'll ever notice in the Bible, 
For every 10,000 false prophets, there's like one real one. Okay, so use a little discernment here. Subscribe to uh, ConradRocks.net Inner Circle Newsletter. It's over here on the sidebar right here. I'm going to show you. Where, see where it says, want to dig deeper? Join Conrad Rocks Inner Circle. Click on right here. And uh, <clears throat> you come to this email page. You sign up. It's that simple. Uh, you'll get a Hearing God podcast right away. Uh, I share things with my inner circle that I don't share with my blog. Like this stuff you hear today, this is for public consumption. So anyway, the good stuff, the inner circle, you know, this right here, the circle of fire, the Peter, James, and John stuff, got to subscribe. Now, I wanted to go back to this. Um... And when he had consulted the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Now notice notice how they're doing the warfare here. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down the strongholds. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that he should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, the worshippers... The worshipers and singers went out in front of the army and say, Praise to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, when they began to sing and to praise, when they began to sing and praise, people, when we worship, I'm leading worship tonight. This is what got me started praying about this. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the enemies. The Lord did mighty. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. And listen to what happened. Which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab, they stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to stray, slay and destroy them. And then when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And listen to how this ends, people. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked upon the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. They were completely destroyed. And, it, I mean, there's more. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in the abundance, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they had some booty. They worshipped, and they were rewarded for their faith, for their belief, for their steadfastness. And uh, which they had stripped themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil that was so much. Okay. So I'm going to end the show here. I uh, wanted to shout out thanks. Letters for the Lord Prison Ministry.com. Um, letters. There, right here. Check it out. Check out the, uh, the website. Letters for the Lord is her. Email hand, uh, her Twitter handle as well. Ask her some questions about prison ministry. I'm sure she'll be happy to to help you out. All right, guys. I love you. Pr please pray for me. There's a lot going on. And remember to abide in peace right now. Where are those thoughts coming from? You know, where are those thoughts coming from? We need to abide in peace. Follow the spirit of peace today. Big deal. It's been going on in the, in the Bible studies. What the spirit's talking about right now. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher.